chocolate and travel. I don't know what I love more, which is why I'm absolutely thrilled to be meeting a baker and aerospace engineer, Andrew Smith, who's going to show me how chocolate relates to the jet engine. Whether it's chocolate or a jet engine blade, to get perfect versions of either, they have to be tempered. Tempering is a process of heating and cooling a material to improve its properties or characteristics. It depends, it's kind of like a Malteser question. How do you eat your Malteser? Exactly. Are you, are you patient or do you just chomp it down? No, I like the melting phase. Melting phase, well, that's exactly why we're here. So the melting is because there's a very specific type of crystals in chocolate okay. called the type five crystal. Cocoa butter, which makes up chocolate, has about six different types of crystal, but only one of them is that glossy, melting in, at mouth temperature type of crystal that we want. And that's what we're working on today. So the chocolate that we've got off the shelf, this is perfect. But often if we need to melt it, if we need to make a bar, if we need to fill it, we need to treat it in a special way and that's called tempering. So today we're tempering. So it would have been tempered because you cheated. Oh no, just a little okay, bit. Okay, I'm doing the same. There's gonna be no chocolate left for mm. this demo. Mm. Oh, it's good chocolate actually. So the idea is that we're gonna melt this down. Yes. To a particular temperature? Great question. So we're going to 50 degrees. So we want to melt all the crystals. We want everything to be molten. And some of the bad crystals have quite a high melting temperature. So we're taking everything to 50. That's step number one. So you cover all crystals? Exactly, exactly. I want pure fluid chocolate. So you've got cocoa solids, which is the, the bit that doesn't really melt, but gives a lot of flavor. Cocoa butter, which is what we're interested in today, which is all about crystals and sugar, of course. So we're more concerned about the buttery bit. Yes, we're concerned with the fat in here. So cocoa butter is a fat and it forms crystals when you cool it down. And that's what we're doing. So now we're melting all the crystals. We're getting rid of this beautiful chocolate, melting it down, and we're gonna have to work quite hard to get it back to what we see now. It's kind of an engineer's dream material because it's not just simple like, you know, ice to water. It's got lots of stuff going on behind the scenes. Look at that, beautifully glossy. Mm. So we're at 40, so keep it Keep it on the move there. That's us there, We're, that's Ooh. us at 45. So we've got a marble surface here. And what I'm gonna ask you to do, Shinny, is just put in the thermometer as I'm agitating it. Marble's very good at just taking heat away from things. I'm just cooling it down quite rapidly. And then if you wanna pop the thermometer just into a bit of that now, and just tell me what it says. So we're down to 32 already. So this will solidify pretty quickly. So I wanna get this down to about 27. So again, just spreading and then just agitating. And why 27? So 27 is just below the crystallization point of those desirable crystals. So we're starting to what's called seed some of those into the chocolate. So getting some of the good crystals that we want. If you keep chocolate moving, it takes a little bit longer for it to solidify. So let's let's go into that bit there. 28.4. So we're almost there. This is Ugh. your natural chocolatier. I think it's just the material. I'm really happy working with this material. <laughs> so what would jet engines be made out of? What kind of metal? Well, thankfully we don't make jet engines out of chocolate. They need to be able to deal with about 2000 Kelvin rather than the 50 degrees Celsius that we're dealing with here. But we make them out of a nickel alloy. You don't want cracks and you also don't want, because it's under incredible strain, we're spinning these turbine blades around. So each one feels like it has a double decker bus hanging off it. We don't want it stretching at all, especially at high temperature, we call that creep. So the fewer kind of crystal and grain boundaries we have in the metal, the stronger we can make it. So again, we use a very special process, similar to our tempering of the chocolate here. We control it very finely to make those gorgeous crystals. Well, this is actually a turbine blade that's run in an engine. So yeah, Rolls-Royce let me borrow this. And this, this has been up to about kind of 1800 degrees Celsius. So, and what's incredible about these turbine blades, each one of these generates about the same amount of power as a Formula One car. This entire blade is made of a single crystal believe it or not. So normally if you uh, set metal, you get lots of little grain boundaries and crystals. We manufacture this very carefully. We melt down all the nickel alloy and we have a little spiral and a special way of cooling it. So this is just a single crystal, which means when it's in an engine, spinning at speed, experiencing the load, it doesn't really strain or move at all. So it's incredibly strong. So there are no cracks in it, basically. Mm -hmm. Under the microscope, it just looks like a singular piece of metal. Wow. And it operates about 200 degrees above it, the metal's melting point. So that's like having an ice cube in the oven and keeping it frozen. Now, do you notice anything peculiar about the surface of the blade itself? Yeah, there's like little 
hairline dashes. Exactly. And dots. Those are cooling holes. We actually take cold air at about 700 degrees from earlier on in the engine and we put it into the blade so it has a protective film to keep the blade cool so as well as the ceramic keep coating. The ice cube. Exactly. Ice, even though around it is like. Yeah. Exactly. And someone furnace. at work has actually made an ice cube model where they drilled holes and put compressed air through it and then they blowtorched it and it works. It does work for an ice wow. cube as well. That is probably the most complex piece of engineering that goes into a jet engine. So we're at 27.2. Which is perfect. And we're trying to get up to 31 now. 31, yeah. 29. Ooh, we're 30. there, we're there, we're there, we're there. I know you've been waiting for this, Shani. You can lick the bowl. You can lick the bow. I, I might go in a corner and do this on my own. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to grab a tray to pop that on, just so I can pop that into the fridge. But this is how you make high temperature, high pressure turbine blades. I'm all for it. Next up, we prepare another sample of chocolate without tempering to see how they compare. Shinny, it's time for the taste test. So I'm not going to tell you which one's which, but we've got exhibit A and exhibit B. Okay. This is really shiny and glossy. Interesting. Which is a good sign. Oh, May have had the marble luxury treatment. Okay, perhaps, perhaps. This is very chalky and matte. I don't it does know look if a little bit more matte. Yeah. So, I've got my guesses. Okay. But you were saying that the crystal formation has a massive correlation to the taste. Yes. So Should it's all about the taste. So I think you're going to have to get stuck in. <sighs> Yes. My guess. Let's go for exhibit A first. Let's get your thoughts. Okay, so, so A and B. Yeah. Ooh, it's melting already. Well, uh, interesting, right? Like almost instantaneously. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to almost keep a hold of it because it just like instantly goes on your fingers. Literally a second on your hands and it starts to melt. So let's try B. Ooh. Oh! Nice. I mean, that was a really nice snap. Notice. True. True, true, yeah. Not melting in your hand? Absolutely. Literally this other one, as soon as I held this other one, yeah. it started sliding over my fingers. Now which one do you think is which, Shinny? This is really, really, really nice. Really tasty. Nice snap. Doesn't get you messy. I reckon this is the one that was made like a turbine blade. Absolutely right. That's the turbine blade chocolate right yes. there. That's the table, that's the marbling, that's the type five crystal. And your prize is this. You get to keep it, you get to keep, you can take it home. As this cools down, as this comes up to room temperature, it will get even more noticeable, the differences between these. But yeah, all to do with how we treated the temperature and how we dealt with the, the chemistry through careful engineering of the temperatures. There's so many different processes to making one item like the jet engine. It's astonishing how much engineering goes into it. It's really opened my eyes to, it's not just about materials. Yeah. It's about what you do with those materials that can make all the difference. You're exactly right. The process is an ingredient. So treat it, treat it well, and it will give you your desired properties. You. Yeah. Be it deliciously melting chocolate or a really strong turbine blade.